HDR Graphics version 2 has been out for a few months now and I thought it was time to talk about the 10 things that you can do in version 2 that you couldn't do in the older version. Oh and if you're new around here I just want to make it extra clear that HDR Graphics and Here to Record are best friends because they're both made by me. And I also want to mention that even though V2 has a pro upgrade, all the features in this video are part of the free version so no one's going to miss out. Number 1. As many graphics as you want. There's no limits to how many graphics you can add per project. Now in the old days you could only add one ticker at a time, things like that, but now you can add as many as you want for your show. Number 2. Lower thirds with a custom background. Possibly the most requested feature ever in the history of the software is adding a custom background to a lower third. Well now there's a few ways to do this with CSS or with multiple graphics, however built right into the lower third graphic is an option to add your own custom background. Here's a 16x9 1080p PNG image that I've created and I'm going to use that as a background. And after a few theme changes and positioning tweaks, it looks just like this. So I have my own custom PNG background, but still have editable text on top. Number three, it works across the network. Here I am running the main application on my Mac, and I have the rundown on my iPad where I'm controlling the graphics. And it's been super nice to have this level of flexibility during any production. Number four, organize your show. H2R Graphics version two mainly exists because I wanted to have everything in one place, and that's how it was built from the start. Now I can throw all my graphics into one place, and then sort them to suit the show we're having. I do tend to keep everything in order based on the flow of the show, so things like opening images at the top, lower thirds maybe after that, and then later on down I have other timers and different graphics that I need. Number five, variables all over the place. Now speaking of organizing your show, quite often you have all the information you need for your graphics before you go live. And this is where variables come in really handy. Here in the list I can add all the speaker names, their titles, what company they work for, and I have access to all of that on the rundown. Then I use the variable name in my graphic instead of static text and I can jump between these names during my show. Number six, show multiple graphics at once. Setting a graphic to queue on or queue off can really help with a smooth flow between two sets of graphics or to show multiple graphics at the same time. When a graphic is off air, you can click on the status indication at the side here and it will queue it up to be brought on air. You can do this with a few or all of your graphics at the same time and then press the run button to show them all at once. And now that these graphics are on air, I can queue them to go off air, and I can even queue up a few more to go on air. And now you can see the run button will hide some and show others. A really smooth transition. Number seven, preview before going live. During a live stream, it's always nice to know what you're going to show before you show it. And that's why there's a preview function built right into V2. Open this separate preview window on your local machine and take a look at any graphics before going live. Here you can see when I queue them on air, they're queued up, and I can see where they're going to fit on the screen and how they're going to look. Number eight, locked mode. With the locked mode, you can lock things down and avoid any more changes to graphics. Now you and your team can just show or hide the graphics, so no more accidental typos or deleting things. Number nine, background transparency. If you're using H2R graphics with something like OBS or vMix, you can use a transparent background on your output to get really clean graphics on your show. You don't need to key out any green or anything like that. You just place your output into vMix here, for example, set the background to transparent in H2R graphics, and now your graphics just work and show up above your other sources. And number 10, simplified theming and CSS overrides. Setting up a consistent theme for all your graphics in your show is really easy with V2. In the theme editor, I can just choose the size and colors that I want, and all the graphics will use this by default. And from there, you can extend or override these with CSS in the CSS editor. Then you can even have multiple themes per project too. So let's say you have messages and lower thirds, they should all look like this but the timers should be text only, and you can do that pretty easily with theme overrides. All right, that's a look at 10 things you can do in H2R Graphics version two that you couldn't do in the old version, but I'd love to hear what kind of features you've been using so far or that you'd love to see in the software. Let me know in the comments below. Stay tuned on this channel for more about live production hardware and software, but also check out my other channel, H2R Apps, which is all about the applications that I make for live video productions. All right, that's it. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.